Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today we're going to be talking about servers and netcode in Ironsight. Now in the previous patch, the developers, they tried to go and change the netcode from TCP to UDP, and in the end of it, it caused a lot of server instability, and so they reverted it, and we're not sure when the actual netcode change is going to be implemented in full. Now two months ago, I went and recorded a commentary, basically a dummy's guide to netcode and servers in Ironsight. Just going and giving a very basic general overview of if they go and do this, this is how it's going to go and affect your experience. In the end of it, I never got around to releasing that commentary, but I think right now is a perfect time to. Because a lot of people are overreacting. They're thinking that the netcode switch is going to be the magic, magic switch that's going to fix the game and make it from a lag experience to a lagless experience. And that's 100% false. Yes, the netcode is bad, but also the server optimization, also the lag compensation, also the server delays. There is many, many things wrong with the network side of this game. And that's what I wanted to go and explain in that commentary. Now for context, I'm currently studying telecommunications engineering and computer science, so I have a bit of experience in this area. I'm no way an expert though, Battle Nonsense is a million times better than me. I just wanted to go and share my knowledge a bit and just kind of explain what this change in general is going to go and do for you guys when it gets implemented. So hopefully guys enjoyed the commentary. If you have any questions, go and post them in the comment section below, but let's get right into it. So let's get into it first talking about the servers. Now, Einsight has a problem when it comes to movement. There is a very, very big movement delay. So when you go and press a W key on your keyboard and you start moving forward, there's going to be a significant delay before your enemy actually goes and sees that you've moved. And therefore, you get shot behind corners. It's, it's, it's as simple as that. Some people would be screaming, that's because of TCP. We've got to go to UDP. It's all a netcode issue. Well, Kind of, but chicken before the egg type of stuff. It's part of the issue, but not the full issue. The servers actually take more responsibility than a lot of other people actually give it credit for. So let's go back to the actual delays. Movement delay, very, very high. But the gunfire and the damage delays, very, very low. So that means even though you might be, be behind a wall, the enemies still go and see, okay, you're out in the open. They shoot you, the delay is very, very low. You go and take damage. If you look at the other games on this list, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege, these games don't have the whole shooting behind the wall issue because in the end of it, the gunfire, damage and movement delays are basically the same. That means that an enemy can't go and register a shot before you've actually gone and moved. They're basically the same delays and in the end of it, it's a very, very fair experience. If you want the technical details why this is the case, go and watch Battle Nonsense's Iron Sight Real Time Netcode Analysis video. It goes into detail and it is a very, very recommended watch. But let's go and talk about the developer's response in this dev report. And basically, they admit that the issues were bigger than what they expected. They need to go and rework the interactions between specific game processes running on the servers. And it's not just flipping a switch from one thing to another. It's completely reworking how hits are registered, how movement is registered, and overall that is going to be a very tiresome process. The developers predict that these improvements will be available around August or September. So until then, you're still unfortunately going to be getting shot behind walls, but I can guarantee it will be not as, not as frustrating as it once was because of the new netcode changes. I feel like the best way to go and compare the server change versus the netcode changes when the server change comes through it will really really minimize getting shot behind walls but the net code change it will be like a filter and it'll just filter out the bullshit getting shot behind walls but with that said stuff will still leak through because of the way the servers are designed and you still will get shot behind shot behind walls but it won't be as drastic as as devastating as it once was so now let's go and talk about netcode, TCP, UDP, these acronyms flying around the Ironsight community. I just want to go and quickly explain what they mean and how this change from TCP to UDP is going to go and affect your gameplay experience. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and it's a reliable transfer protocol. Basically, if you want a packet to be sent from host A to host B, 100% guaranteed you want that packet to be sent, 
you use TCP. If you want to go and download a file, if you want to go and load a web page, TCP is used because no matter how laggy your connection is, it will just keep trying and trying and trying and trying and trying again and eventually that file will be downloaded and eventually that web page will be loaded. It guarantees, it guarantees reliable transfer, it guarantees that stuff will be loaded. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol, and basically, it doesn't care about reliability. It just goes and sends the information to where it wants to be, and in the end of it, if the packet is lost because of a laggy connection or whatever, it doesn't try to go and recover it. Now, the reason why TCP and UDP is so, so important when we're talking about online experiences it's because people go and lag. People lag sometimes very, very severely. 900 ping, 1,500 pings I've sometimes been up to. And in general, when you go and play another video game that isn't Iron Sight and you go and lag, you can't go and do anything. You can try to go and move and sometimes the server will go and let you move a little bit, but most of the time it will just teleport you back to where you were because the server is just saying, okay, these packets are just so, so delayed that we're just not gonna go and accept them. And because the game is running on a UDP based network, then there's going to be no request to try to go and send that packet again. And then in the end of it, nothing goes and happens. It's just you suffering your terrible, terrible, terrible ping and nobody else. Nobody else is getting affected realistically. But with TCP, when you go and fire that bullet and it hits an enemy on your screen, you might have 1,500 ping and that might be a headshot that goes and kills an enemy. It doesn't matter if it's a second later it doesn't matter because that packet's going to be sent. It's going to be sent to the server. The server's like, all right, it checks out. Good, good. We're a TCP. We're reliable. We're going to go and make sure that gets sent to the other person, that enemy that you shot, and then the enemy dies behind a wall, severely behind a wall. And this is also the reason why people are just walking through walls and shooting you through walls as well because they are lagging so, so much. And... The game just completely accepts it, that it can't go and di differentiate between what's good and what's bad. It just goes and lets everything through, and it's just a muddled mess, a completely muddled mess. So in the end of it, what is this whole TCP to UDP change actually going to go and fix? Basically, if you're versing people that are lagging, you're going to go and get shot behind walls less. It is very, very, very simple. You will still go and get shot behind walls because of the way that the server has been optimized in a certain way that movement just isn't a priority and it has a very, very long delay. But versing people that have 500, 600 ping or even 256 ping, that is just normal for me when I connect to the North American servers, you're going to go and get shot behind walls less. But for me, for people that are lagging, it's going to be harder. Less of my shots will go and connect. Less of my bullets will go and actually register in kills. And therefore, my gameplay experience is going to become a lot more difficult. But overall, the landscape is going to be a lot fairer and there's going to be a lot less bullshit. But it's still going to be slightly frustrating. You're still going to get shot behind walls once in a while until those server fixes come through in August and September. But with that said, they are going to implement something quite soon where you get matched with people with similar ping, which is honestly something they should have done a long, long time ago. People that have low pings get matched with people with low pings and therefore it's overall a more fair experience. So then the question gets brought up, but what about the people that are always quote unquote lagging, i.e. the Australian and New Zealand players? Well, I suppose that we're just gonna go and get put into the same lobbies together and everybody's gonna have a two bar ping and that's just how it's going to be. And even though it's not going to be the best experience, it's overall going to be better than us just completely cheaping out other players and just getting really, really bullshit kills. But in regards to everything that I just talked about, the piece of the puzzle that is missing is more servers. More servers in more regions so it can go and support more players. We're getting a new server in South America, so South American players are going to be absolutely r over the moon. But for players in Australia, New Zealand, and Asia, we're still just waiting out for an Asian server at the minimum. I can play on the 100 ping. Fuck, I can play on the 250 to 300 ping. But it's not fun. It's not fun when I get these really, really bad experiences. Most of the time, it's okay. But with that said, it's probably not okay in the case of Ironsight for the people on the other end that I'm shooting behind walls, etc. 
It's very simple. You have servers in more regions, and if that server is closer to the person that's connecting to it, they're going to have less lag. They're going to have less delay. It's very, very, very simple. And that's something that I think really needs to be prioritized. They need to spend the money. They've got to go and flesh out some cash and really go and optimize their servers, but also go and make sure the servers are in different regions. And so not everybody's just connecting to North America and not everybody's just connecting to Europe because if you have that type of experience, when you go live on Steam, and I believe it will go on Steam, you know, soon enough in the future because that is just a massive platform. If you have Australian players, going trying to connect to North America because that that's the closest server they just won't play the game I was on discord with a few of my friends and we we're just talking and uh, talking about call of duty and whatever I was like oh do you want to go and play iron sight and they're like what is there any Australian server and I was like no is there Asian servers no and I said fuck it we're not playing it and that's legitimately how a lot of people go and do when it comes to free to play first person shooters and games in general that don't have servers in their region they just won't play it because they're not used to playing with lag I'm used to playing with lag, therefore I can go and handle the 250 ping. The people that aren't used to the lag, they just won't put up with it. And therefore that's something that really needs to be prioritized. So overall, hopefully you guys have learned a little bit when it comes to servers and netcode, when it comes to video games, and when it comes to Ironsight in particular. If you guys have any questions, I highly suggest going and checking out the video by Battle Nonsense first, because he goes and explains everything 10 times better than I do, because he has a lot more experience in this area. But if there's any questions you want to go and ask me, then chuck them in the comment section below and I'll try to go and give my, you know, biggest stab at it. Try to go and hopefully, hopefully try to give you a decent answer. But with that said, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to go and give it a like, ready? Make sure to go and subscribe to the channel as well. Man, I'm just playing so much of it. Lots of gameplays, lots of commentaries and stuff like that. But other than that, Undercover Dudes, all the way from Down Under, out.